Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Don't miss out on our comic book creator interviews, including our monthly Chichester chats with comic book legend D.G. Chichester, superhero movie brackets, and our search for the worst comic book movie of all time, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. This is Luca Perch, host of a Totally Turtle Sports and Gaming YouTube channel, and you're listening to the Occasion Lunatics Podcast Network. In brightest day, in blackest night, no evil shall escape my sight, but those who worship evil's might beware my power. Green Lantern's light. Hello and welcome back to Sector 2814, the Green Lantern Podcast. I am Phil. Joining me as always, Master of the Core, it is. I am Will. Hey, everyone. And tonight we uh returning to the Judd Winnick run with Green Lantern 151 and 152. But we actually have some uh other, some current Green Lantern uh, things to, di- well, upcoming Green Lantern things to discuss. We do indeed, don't we? Comics an update kind of sort of on that TV show. Uh, kind of. Uh, and then, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, yes, I guess we'll get to the news first. Uh, all right. Well, first, um, yes, for those of you listening on the podcast, there, there will be no interruption. But, yes, it's been quite a little bit since Will and I uh, have spoken last. Over like a 10 week. days, man. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So, so one, I missed you. And uh, <laughs> I missed you too. Hug, hug. <laughs> two, eight, yes. Quite a few things dropped. Um, well, all the, uh, all the, D, all the, uh, what movie and TV stuff dropped today. But mm-hmm. yes, kids, the co- first of all, the comic is coming. It is. The revamped Green Lantern. The, a revamped Green Lantern ongoing series will launch in March, according to mm-hmm. Newsarama, with writer it, Na- with new, with new writer Jeremy Adams. That, that's uh, that was a big surprise because you know they had already announced uh, Mariko uh, Tamaki. Did I get that right? I think yeah. as the writer. Now, if I also remember correctly, Jeremy Adams actually wrote a couple of episodes of the greatest. Yes, I like it more than Batman the Animated Series. The greatest Green Lan- the greatest animated series ever, the Green Lantern animated series, right? Oh, oh, Jeremy Adams wrote some of that. I think he wrote a couple episodes of that, yes. Okay, because I'm, try- I'm trying to remember. I think he might be the current guy on the Flash book right now. So, uh, Yes, I, that's, I think that's uh, the same thing. He wrote, I'd have to look. Um I don't know. I was reading it. It was on Reddit somewhere that I that I found it. But yeah, so you know, so I might I might have to try to pull Make a Wish here and try to get an interview with Jeremy Adams. So uh, Will can talk we animated go. series. We can talk the Flash, but the current Flash book. And, and, it, and we can and talk Green plans. Lantern. <laughs> yeah, same as plans for Cal Jordan. Yes. And, and I, art it. How good, do you say that good. name? Uh, artist uh, X E R M A N I C O. I don't know if it's Ermanico or something. I, I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm probably butchering it, and I apologize <laughs> for doing but so. But as this article po- points out, it was it was it's it's the the like creative team from Flashpoint Beyond, you know, minus mm-hmm. Jeff Johns, of course. Yes, and I think also um, it was going to be Green Lantern Hal Jordan, but I think the title is just Green Lantern now, right? It might be because, and again, uh, we they also announced that yes. Uh, going forward, John Stewart is not getting his own ongoing. His right now, he's going to be a backup story in this in the same book as how, uh, which will then still, play out into the limited series. I think, right? If I read that right, may uh, maybe, but it's still written by Philip Kennedy Johnson. Yes, because mm-hmm. he, I think he posted something on Twitter, uh, you know, uh, kind of explaining you know the news that dropped. You know, no, it's not canceled. It's a backup that I am writing and which will spin off into John Stewart series at a later date or something. Yeah. But you know, it's saying here, the publisher did not indicate the length or format of the John Stewart story. So, yeah. You know, the, uh, I'm, 
I was optimistic about uh, the Mariko Tamaki yeah. book, but I think I'm maybe even a little more optimistic about about it with Adams as the writer, just because you know he's he's written Hal. I mean, granted, in another medium, but he's written Hal before, and you know, I think that's maybe that's important. Maybe it's not. I'd still like to see what she could do, you know, on uh-huh. a Green Lantern series. And I'm, you know, I'm a little confused as to what DC's doing, you know, having announced her without an artist and then suddenly she's off the book and there's a new writer and artist on the book. You know, yeah. I, I don't know what's going on. And then we're kind of combining the two series they announced into one book. Yeah, it's, but we're getting a book. So, hey, that's a good thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Not till May, but yes. And did you read the solicitation copy for it? Oh, um, I'm, I was looking at the article here. Described as a story of redemption, loss, and finding out that maybe you can go home again. The new series spins out of Dark Crisis on Infinite Earths, according to DC, and features a quarantined Sector 2814 by the orders of the Guardians of Oa. And Hal Jordan, Sector 2814's Green Lantern, is quarantined as well. So, yeah, it looks like we're getting Hal coming back to Earth. But no, the actual solicit is a heartbreaking defeat has sent Hal Reeling returning home to rediscover his roots and find the man responsible for ruining his life, Sinestro. So the thing that I that confuses me about that is, oh, Sector 2814 is being quarantined by the Guardians. Who are all dead, right? If, you know, am I miss? Did I miss something somewhere? Did they come back during uh, Dark Crisis? I mean, what what's going on? <laughs> I don't know. Is that going to be the thing? Is uh, they're going to be like, oh yeah, Dark Crisis reset everything? You know, I, I mean, because we went. I mean, whether you like him or don't like him, or like his writing or don't like his writing, um. And why am I totally blanking on his name right now? Because I'm getting old and seeing Jeffrey Thorne? Jeffrey Thorne, thank you. No. Whether or not you, you know, like, dislike any of those, the Guardians, the Malthusians, the Controllers are all gone per the last volume of Green Lantern. We don't have a central power battery anymore. We have that beacon thing. Uh, apparently, there are two John Stewarts now. So, I oh, I wonder if oh, I'm sure Jer- Jeremy Adams may explain all of this, or you know, it's like I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I I I feel like I feel a little like the. I mean, there were some really good parts of the Thorn Run that I really really liked. Except for except for his irrational hatred of Hal Jordan. Well, we're, we're all drawn, <laughs> we're, we're all drawn to different characters, whatever. Yes. But you know, not fond of the inclusion of the new gods because generally not. Yeah, I don't think the two things mesh well together. But that's probably just me. Yeah. But there was a lot of work put in to set up a new status quo for Green Lantern. As a you know, as part of the DC universe, yeah, and it seems to me that all of that's been ignored. I mean, I, I mean, I, I don't know. We got we got dead lanterns that are alive in Dark Crisis. We've got okay. uh, you know lanterns that are back. I mean, it just, I don't know. Okay, <laughs> here's a here here's a sticky size story point that you may not like okay so they're quarantining sector 2814 are they quarantining all the human green lanterns or are they just, just quarantining, <laughs> are they quarantining how jordan because they he's getting the blame for something once again uh, that that's status quo for how right <laughs> <laughs> you know i mean we're, we're gonna get to see john again which is good you know with the philip kennedy johnson backup series that will you know, roll, spin out into a limited series, I guess. But, you know, what about Kyle? What about Guy? You know, what about Joe? You know, uh, and then Simon and Jessica. You know, Jessica's a Yellow Lantern, but she was a Green Lantern in Dark Crisis. Yeah. I I don't know. 
I mean, we might see John in other places too, because uh, as far as I know, Philip Kennedy Johnson's still writing action comics. So, I mean, he you could see him mm-hmm. like drop in on Superman every so often too. So, although yeah. on, in action, they are doing backup stories right now. Like 1051, they started doing backup stories. So maybe John will get a backup story there also. Or I don't know. I mean, it seems like we've waited a really long time to still not. At least we have we have we have a creative team and we have a an on sale date. Yes, <laughs> that's something. Yes, <laughs> songs doesn't get pushed back. <laughs> yeah, I hope not. <laughs> but, but I mean, yeah, that's good I'm news. I did. Yeah, yeah. I, except, you know, part of me is, you know, a little disappointed that they didn't follow through with the Mariko Tamaki series. Yes. But, you know, again, we don't know what went on behind the scenes or anything like that. So at this point, you know, I, I guess I'm happy with, with Adams as writer and, and his artist. So who I'm not going to say the name again and probably butcher it. Just, you know. Yes. But the art looks really nice. So there we go. Oh yeah, I'm looking up. Yeah, I'm gonna have to contact Jeremy Adams. Yeah, we'll see if we can talk some Green Lantern. Uh, talk about the current Flash one minute war, <laughs> <laughs> which is actually a really intriguing idea too. I, I've oh, yeah. I've just kind of seen the a little bit of the you know solicits for that, which yeah, I haven't read it. But... it. It's kind of still in the early stages, but it's yeah, pretty much like invaders who like move at super speed. So pretty much the rest of the planet's frozen except for couple speedsters the whole flash family <laughs> yes oh yeah, definitely so yeah we're we'll gonna have to i'm gonna have to reach out to him but also all right kids we also got uh i guess james gunn for finally announced made his announcements today mm-hmm. and no uh dave batista is not playing bane so yeah don't get your hopes up <laughs> that was a big rumor for a while all right, let's let's pull up the other link I sent. All right, so yeah, lots of stuff. I guess they're putting uh, Peacemaker season two on hold. Uh, mm-hmm. Oh, Superman Legacy. I guess they're gonna, they're gonna be doing like a younger Superman story. Uh, Written by Gunn, I believe. I think yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Waller of uh, Viola Davis starring series. Yeah. That's kind of like the first uh, sequel to uh, mm-hmm. Peacemaker. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you see this? Uh, Paradise Lost. I guess uh, they were trying to like uh, compare it to like, yeah, it's going to be like Game of Thrones, but with the Amazons. Yeah, I did see that. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, they're good. Oh, they actually are pulling it, the trigger on a booster gold something. Yes, they're doing a Booster oh, Gold series. Oh, nice. He, he said, uh, if imposter syndrome were a superhero, I think it's that. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, but, yes, kids, here's what you're concerned about. They announced a project called Lanterns. Being compared, okay, the description, being compared to a huge HBO quality event along the lines of True Detective. The series will focus on how Jordan and John Stewart, hmm, the guys who are starting the comic now, get out of here, uh, <laughs> who, who investigate a mystery that uh, Saffron says plays a really big role leading us into the main story that we're telling across film and television. So this is a very important show for us. Interesting. So do you think you think there's something there that they that they've called it lanterns and not green lanterns? Maybe I mean that's a good that's a good guess I think I'm but also I, I I'm really I want to keep an open mind about this but the fact that they're playing you know they're comparing it to True Detective and the lanterns are going to be mm-hmm. on Earth I'm I was I was hoping for a little more you know yeah outer outer space action but uh, you know I'm sure it's going to be good. 
Well, I mean, I guess maybe unless they start on Earth and like they talk about this big event, unless mm -hmm. as we get closer to the big event, they're going to be head towards space. Again, if it's called lanterns, are we going to have to investigate yellow lanterns, red lanterns? Uh... Yeah, that that's that's an excellent question because you know it wasn't what we had four or five ongoing lantern books and one of them was red lanterns we also had a sinestro book which was mm -hmm. essentially yellow lanterns we had a larfleas book um so i don't know that's i mean i i also feel kind of bad that the other lantern series which was completely written and had so much work done on it I know. That's just being completely abandoned at this point. I so. know. I mean, they had Guy Gardner uh, cast and yes, yep. Alan Scott cast. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, good news. You're going to get your Hal Jordan. So. Yeah, I know. I was, but uh, you know, he's not the. I, I know this is going to sound shocking, but he's not the only Green Lantern. Okay. <laughs> he's just my favorite. <laughs> I mean, we're going to get Hal and John, yeah. which is cool, uh, you know, in on on HBO, I guess. Um, yeah, I think any DC show going forward, you're going to see on HBO Max. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they can't give us everything all at once, which was, I think, the problem that the DC EU tried to do is, you know, yeah. hey, we're going to take 10 years of build up and just cram that down into one movie. So there you go. But yeah. Um, yeah, that didn't work so well. Yeah, so, well, at least Gunn comes from a Marvel property, so maybe it's you know mm -hmm. who knows. It's like yeah, you can't rush this. You, I know you want to be Marvel today. You can't you can't, you can't be the MCU today. Okay, you got to put that you work. Ten in. years. Yeah, yeah. you got to put the put the time and the the effort in. So yeah, I'm. I mean, all the shows they sound pretty radically different. So you know, they're all the shows are not going to appeal to everybody, which I think yeah. is fine, and. But one thing they I think they said about Superman is that Superman is for everybody. This is yeah this is Superman. So yeah, I'm I'm pretty I'm cautiously optimistic. I mean, you know, DC has managed to disappoint us so many times over yeah. the last you know decade. <laughs> and I would assume with a Superman something or whatever, or is that mm -hmm. a movie Superman legacy? Is that a show or a movie? I think that's a movie. I okay. think, yeah, that's going to be their big movie. And then I think the only two with the dates announced were Superman legacy. And then the Batman, the, the Batman, next, it was it the Batman, the Batman series. Yeah. Se yeah sequel. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, Although I thought, I think I saw somewhere that did gun say like the Batman with Pattinson and, uh, the Joker movie are both like Elseworlds things. So, oh, yeah, that's yeah, and and I think he still said that. Uh, I thought I saw that Lois and uh, the Superman and Lois may have one or two seasons left on it. Well, I know uh, there's one more season coming after that. I don't know. Yeah, who knows? Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's got at least another season coming. And uh, oh, next week, uh, the final season of The Flash starts. Oh, cool. How many? That's a shortened season, too. It's like 13 episodes, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Going to be the basic, basically going to close out the Arrowverse, but yes. Closing time. <laughs> yep, yeah, that's right. Uh, but yeah, I'm pretty, here, I'll double check this, but yeah, I'm pretty sure, yeah, it's only like 13 episodes or something, so. Mm -hmm. Well, I, yeah, it's interesting because it was the first spinoff from Arrow, mm -hmm. and it's outlasted everybody, you know, Legends of Tomorrow, um, that woman even lasted longer than Arrow itself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, yep, thirteen episodes, nine total seasons. That's actually re that's really impressive. You know? Oh yeah, I mean, think about that. <laughs> who? How many? How many shows get? I mean, none of the Star Treks got the nine. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, think of like a sci-fi show that's got the not nine seasons. I mean. Oh, so I'll wait. Yeah, I'm. I'm not thinking of any. Oh uh -uh, no, no. X Files, maybe. Oh, maybe. Uh, maybe. Yeah, I don't know what they. I don't. I don't remember. That's so long ago. So I was gonna say, but they, they, they and they. I mean, they came back after a while. You know, 
a while as well. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see. Let me look this up. Yeah, now you, now you got me curious, but uh, but yeah, I can't wait. Uh, you know, nine seasons in the Flash is so be over. <laughs> I think that kind of puts the puts a stake in all of the uh, you know kind of Berlanti verse, right? Pretty much, yeah. That's what I'm saying with like uh, the new DC stuff coming out. I, I bet you Superman and Lois. That's probably going to be the last season that's coming up here soon. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh wait a minute. Uh... And I think Stargirl, that that finished out its run, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Stargirl's done. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. All those are done. Yeah. The only thing left. Well. Oh God. Okay. Flash is starting its last season. Superman and Lois is getting another season. I don't know if it's gonna be the last one or not. It's not gonna make it past the first season, but they're putting. Do you hear about Gotham Knights? No. It's a, it's a bunch of teenagers. Once again, Batman has gone missing, so it's like a bunch of teenagers you pretty much have never heard of uh, trying to protect <laughs> Gotham. And it's Meanwhile, it's like, oh, Batman's been around so long to have disappeared. But when the start, show starts, Harvey Dent is still around. Okay. Uh, <laughs> a non-two-faced Harvey Dent. Yeah, okay. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> All righty. Yeah, I was going to cool. say, I, I, I'm trying to... <laughs> I'm trying to remember. I think like, yeah, it's a bunch of characters never heard of. There might be like a Stephanie Brown or something in there, but that might be uh, like your big name. It's like really. Uh, yeah, okay. Everyone. I mean, I mean, it. It. I guess it looks so. Good. The hype is it's so good. Even the uh, makers of the uh, game. You know, there's a uh, Gotham Knights game for like PlayStation uh-huh. and all that. They're like, we have nothing to do with that show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nice. <laughs> so, um, yes, in the wake of Bruce Wayne's murder, his rebellious adopted son forges an unlikely alliance with the children of Batman's enemies when they are all framed for the. Yeah, supposedly he's like a son of Batman, but it's not Damien. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I did, oh, and that reminds me, there was a gun announced a uh, like a Robin show. Oh, did he? I think so. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's like a Damien. Damien, like a Damien show. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, hold on. Of course. Hold on. Batman. My favorite character. <laughs> you know Ray's going to be tuning in. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> what does that do? Oh, man. Things start to march already. But yeah, I know that <laughs> Lilith has no interest in it. I'm, I'm, I don't know. I might have to watch it just to watch the train wreck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, hey, it could be good. It could be good. You know, let's get. We we have to give it a shot, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, once again, it's like, like I said, it's pretty much characters you never heard. Again, a son of Batman, but it's not Damien. It's like okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think I think they've exhausted all the ways they're like, hey, let's do a Batman show on TV without Batman. Batman, yeah. <laughs> I don't think there's a. I don't think there's any other way to do it now, is there? You can have a ghost, maybe. I don't know. Batman, my favorite character. Into the Dark Knight, all to do with Batman. <laughs> all right, we're 23 minutes in. Should we start the uh, issues? Let's do the. These are not Guy Gardner issues. These are actually, um, I feel like, a, a step up for Winnick. I, I feel like he's getting a better handle on. No. On pacing and you know and making it a little bit more dramatic, so at least and you kind of like and you kind of like it better that it's not like Ion stuff now and yeah that story that whole that was a lot of pages that dedicated to a story that ultimately did something that I liked, but it just did it in a really kind of boring and uninteresting way. <laughs> you know, if I, I mean, and, and I really feel like Winnick's a better writer, yeah, than what he showed us, and you know that what was that a year long epic, you know, of the Ion story or whatever, something um, like that, yeah. Uh, it, it just, 
yeah, I'm kind of, th- I-, I was kind of thinking about this. It's like, yeah, I don't think they know rebirth is coming yet because wouldn't you just wait till rebirth and like just have the specter, whoever just bring Oa and everything back. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, I mean, and that's the thing I like is that, Hey, Oa and the guardians are back. That's, that's cool. You know, now, why will were they dead and now they're alive? <laughs> they were absorbed and now are unabsorbed. I <laughs> it just popped out of that battery. That's right. Oh, they were in there. They were in there baking with Dr. Light. Yeah, that's right. They were just getting down partying. <laughs> <laughs> their 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 uh, their spiritual essence was in there. Their, their bodies may have died because they can't again. They came out. They were like little kid, little children. So, yeah. Yeah, and Kilowog's back, which happened in the last Will yes. Testament of Hal Jordan. Yeah, so we'll see so, more of him soon. Yep. So everything except the killing of Sinestro, right? Has been undone, yes. And the killing of the other Lanterns, which we're not even sure really happened in the first place, yeah. but everybody assumes that it happened. So, yeah, I mean... Remember, never assume! <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> makes an ass out of you and Umption. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> uh, all right. So, Green Lantern number one fifty one. Wow, one fifty one already. Uh, I know we're getting up there. August two. Well, don't worry. For, once we hit rebirth, we'll re, we'll start. We'll read numbers. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> one, two, three. All right. Uh, Green Lantern one fifty one. All. Again, we're never going to get to a Green Lantern one. We're never going to have a Green Lantern one fifty one again. Not in our lifetimes. I don't think so. Probably never. <laughs> They'll probably just keep reboot. Green Lantern one fifty one, August two thousand two, Out of Our Heads, Part One, Back in the Saddle, uh, by writer Judd Winnick, penciler Dale Eaglesham, inker Rodney Ramos, colorist Moose Bauman. Letterer Kurt Hathaway and editors Bob Shrek and Nachi Castro. Cool. Yes. Sporting a new outfit, Green Lantern is patrolling New York City and not only stops a bank robbery, but also rescues a young woman who is bothered by a lunatic pervert. Unlike your uh, calm, uh, common, no, you're ca- you're, you're calm, well mannered uh, perverts. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Later, Cow and his assistant, Terry Berg, have a meeting with Rena Stone, the editor-in-chief of Beast Magazine. At first, she seems angry, but then suddenly she feels hot and takes off her clothes in front of her staff. And Rena is not the only one acting strange, as other staff members and the people in the streets freak out and randomly attack each other. Cow gets away from Terry and then uses his Green Lantern powers to calm down the people. But he also has to fight a green monster, and when he searches for the origin of that monster... Cal discovers his girlfriend, Jade, who is crouched in an alley while constantly repeating, they're going to kill me. All right, William, thoughts? I Like you said, lots of setup. Lots of setup. You know, and you can, I think you can really tell what he enjoys writing the most, which is the, yeah. the personal life stuff. I mean, just that's... And okay, I get that, but uh, he has a Green Lantern ring. Why doesn't he just, you know, go like, "Hey, let's see if I can figure out what's wrong with these people," with his Green Lantern ring that would tell him what's wrong with these people? <laughs> Especially since we, since he kind of upgraded it last time too. Yeah. So I also found the whole swearing thing at the very beginning. Oh yeah, yeah. Difficult to read and kind of annoying, uh, generally, you know? <laughs> I mean, I get it. He's making an obvious speech pattern so that you can tell when people are either infected or possessed yeah. or whatever. But I, I don't know. It just fell a little flat to me. So basically, our mystery villain is giving every, everyone Tourette's. Okay. Right. They're getting all sweary. Yes. Hmm. <laughs> But you had no problem with the bit like him stopping a bank robbery. I mean, <laughs> originally, you know, before you find out that hey, it's connected to everything else, yeah, it felt kind of lame. But then, okay, it's connected because it's brainwave 
junior spoilers, um, doing you know, all of these things, which is why it kept happening around Kyle. Of course, why wouldn't he just mess with Kyle too? It's, it, the whole motivation around junior is a little bit, oh, I touched everybody's heads and people suck, so I'm going to be mean. You know, I, okay. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I think the point is he's insane, but yeah, yeah I get it. It's like, okay. <laughs> and? And? Uh, and, you know, I, I feel like that's a, and maybe, maybe this goes back to his portrayal of Nero. You know, I didn't feel like that that was, done very well so you know and again we don't have the ending to this particular story yet uh, but um we will see how it how it you know finishes yeah and then the loot the uh pervert in the park they uh once he hate cow hands him over the cops he's like oh this guy lives on the upper west side he's got 300 dollars in cash on him you know he's a he's a rich successful man why is he running amok in the park you know a muck, a muck, a muck, a muck. Sorry. <laughs> then the whole thing at the feast with Kyle and Terry, and I don't know if someone was just looking for an excuse to draw a woman getting yeah, naked. But exactly, yeah. <laughs> I thought that was a little obvious, but yeah. <laughs> uh, but I do. Uh, again, is it just like? I know it's a comic, but it's just like, oh hey, Cal, you know, Cal's like, oh, I'll call, uh, I'll call uh, my girlfriend. Oh yeah, the superhero girlfriend really helps. It's like, I think Terry does put it together <laughs> later on, but it's just like, yeah. come on, yeah, Jane's, Jane's <laughs> dating Kyle. She's always seen with Green Lantern. Ah, uh, now one thing that did kind of, I found a little bit annoying, is that. I would think that Brainwave couldn't possess someone of sufficient willpower. Yes. And Alan Scott, I mean, come oh, on. Yeah, well, that, yes, <laughs> next, next issue, surprise. Yes, he, yes, he, he's <laughs> able to take over Alan, yes. And then, and even Jade, I mean, she's, she was, she doesn't have to use the ring anymore, right? Because he reactivated mm -hmm. her powers. But she still has, I would think, you know, she has exercised her will so that she's, you know, not, not a pushover, I would think. And also too, I mean, she's, she's had experience with brainwave junior. So shouldn't she be a little more immune to it? Perhaps. I mean, I don't know. So. I mean, if you want to show like Cal's not all omnipotent now, maybe have, you know, Jade being able to shake this off because she has been around it before. And, they, and he can't. Yeah. Or something yes. like that. So. I don't know this. Like I said, I, I feel like this was a step up for Winnick on the tie on the series because there's yeah. you know some more drama in it and it's not just a series of events. There's some yeah. There, there's there's some dramatic, you know, uh, and, scenes and everything. So and we're kind of getting more of like a superhero story. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, I feel like 152, the next issue, was probably stronger than 151. Yeah. Well, again, this one was a lot of setup, but yeah. All right. All right. Here, let me do the synopsis for 152. So again, we'll talk this whole thing out. All right. Green Lantern 152 from September 2002. Out of our heads, part two. Uh, okay. Dread Winnick still writing, but this time penciler Eric Battle and inker Robert Campanella, and everyone. Oh, everyone else is the same. I was gonna say, but editors Bob Shrek and Morgan. Don Tanville this time. All right. Mm. Okay. Uh, Green Lantern has brought Jade to Star Labs and has called Sentinel to join him there. Dr. Emil Brown has examined Jade but could not find any reason for her behavior or that, or that of all the other people. Green Lantern and Sentinel leave Star Labs to take care of some riots still going on in the streets of New York City. When both heroes come near a burning house, Sentinel suddenly feels that something is happening to him and he tells Cow to knock him out. Of course, Cow does not want to hurt the father of his girlfriend, but that hesitation is enough for someone or something to take full control of Sentinel. 
While Green Lantern and Sentinel are fighting each other, Jade wakes up again and immediately tells the doctors that someone has to warn Green Lantern and Sentinel that Henry is back. Indeed, it is Henry King Jr. Who was, once, who once was driven into madness when his father, the original Brainwave, died and passed his powers to his son. After spending years in an asylum financed by Sentinel, Henry now seems to be healed and in full control of his powers. Before Henry got mad, Jade was his girlfriend and for a short time, and thus, her and Sentinel seem to be obvious choices to try out his powers against. Green Lantern fights Henry valiantly, but even when he is joined by Jade, he cannot defeat the new Brainwave. After having demonstrated his superiority, Brainwave decides to leave, but he warns the heroes to stay out of his business. Okay, I get the ending. I don't know if I like it, because it's... Mm -hmm. I mean, I think the whole point is like, oh, hey, look, Kyle isn't like. Uh... He's not eye on anymore. He's yeah, no, no, yeah. yeah. He's not godlike. Yeah, yeah. He can get his ass kicked. Yeah, but it's just like, I'm just, but it's just like, yeah, heroes, stay out of my way. You know, things are coming. Ha ha ha. I don't, I don't think we ever see Brainwave, at least not in the green, the rest of Kyle's series. We don't see Brainwave. So it's just like, really? That's it? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying. If, Again, I haven't read these in a while. I might be forgetting something, but as far as I know, yeah, I don't think he comes back. I don't think so. It's that's what I'm saying. With you know, once Winnick leaves, is do we just forget this dangling plot thread? Wow, that's disappointing. Then, I don't um, know. so the other thing is, you know, I'm I'm no scientist in the DC universe. Yeah, but if people start acting weird, maybe I'd call the JLA and say. Yo, Martian Manhunter, dude, can you check to see if somebody's, you know, mentally influencing these people? And two, it's like, you know, <laughs> Nero showed up and everyone came running. It's like no one's no one's come running. I mean, again, it's more it was more subtle, at least until Jade's contract York. started tearing yeah. stuff up. But yeah, I mean. And I don't know if. If you're gonna show, if the purpose of these two issues is to show that 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 Kyle is not ion and all powerful anymore, then sure, have him get you know smacked around some, but have him get smacked around by somebody that is actually capable of smacking him around. Okay, <laughs> you know? yeah, who who he should have a harder time. Yeah, brainwave. Yeah. Should, you know, especially if Jade's there, if Alan's there, they shouldn't have this big of a problem. Yeah. Yeah, it just seems like a a weird villain to throw at the, the pair. I mean, it, granted, it is connected to them, so I mean that makes sense from that point. But bring it, bring in a powerhouse, bring in Graven. Yeah, yeah, Joker eyes. Sorry, did I say oh. that? <laughs> um, take 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 my take my Graven, please. I mean, I don't know. It seems like a. I mean, I, I get that he that. That brainwave is connected, but it just seems like an odd choice to yeah. throw a telepath at somebody whose primary function is willpower. And we know that the ring can stop all kinds of electricity, you know, of, of energy. Yeah. So bubble him up. Don't let any telepathy out and done. You know, I mean, he already explained what he was doing. So now, you know, yeah. it, it's, I don't know. It, it's, a disappointing villain. How about that? Yeah. And I was going to say, the one thing that's always taken me out of this, it's like uh, both art styles were fine for both issues, but they're so con they're so different, different. art styles. It kind of takes sure. me out when you open up, yeah. up the second issue and it's like a completely different art style. Well, and you know, that's that's something that bothers me too, which is why when um I wanted to make sure that you know the artist that we had for number three was the same for number four because that was a two-part story. Yeah, where that continuity of the look and feel of everything was extraordinarily important. And you know, this is a two-part story, so why you know why didn't they have the same art team for both stories? I'm sure the answer is money and time, but you know, or uh, you know, <laughs> somebody had a last-minute emergency. I mean, yeah, yeah I could, I could. Again, I'm not blaming anybody, but yeah, it just takes me out because, like, again, two fine art styles, but it's like they're so different. It's like they, they clash, and you're like, I, is this the same story? Yeah. You know, I mean, 
because this is yeah. kind of like I, I think 2002 this is kind of like the end of that where you you'll get like a different artist on an arc because these days when the, since they collect everything i think they like to keep the same mm-hmm. artist at least for an arc so it's just like oh yeah if your book's late it's gonna be late but yeah we're waiting for the artist yeah. or whatever mm-hmm. yep absolutely i mean it's It's a weird choice from 20 years ago, you know? I know. I know. <laughs> I'm always like, oh, this is those newer Kyle Rayner stories. But yeah, it's like 20 years ago. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but, you know, again, to give to give Winnick some credit, I, I feel like he's getting better. You know, I yeah. we talked about the kind of the disappointment of Circle of Fire and the whole lead up to Ion story. But... This was a little more focused. I felt like the pacing was a bit better and it just it read more like a story as opposed to just a sequence of events. So and again, I don't know, just like maybe if you if you want to if their whole point is that brainwave kick uh, Kyle around, maybe just have him like throw in some inner monologue. Just, just be like, oh, I'm so out of practice. You know, I, I've mm-hmm. come to rely on just that I can just snap my fingers and make stuff happen. Now I have to, like, you know, now I have to actually, you know think about things and do things <laughs> yeah, actually come up with a plan you know have to outsmart yeah. some um yeah oh well but we, <laughs> we will get to re- we, we will get to re- revisit ion uh in the lead up to the sinestro core war yes so. yes yes yeah oh yeah 12 issue ion series yes That's oh right. um, but no you're saying this is a 20-year story hey well in another two three years i uh, rebirth is going to be a 20-year-old story I know it's not. That's so not possible. <laughs> no, not possible. <laughs> Hal Jordan's been back for the last twenty years almost now. Yeah, he was only gone ten. <laughs> but it seemed like such a long time, didn't it? It did. Ten years, twenty, thirty years. Yeah, however long ago. Got him old. Get off my lawn. Sorry. <laughs> but I mean, just the time he was gone, he was only gone ten years. But yeah, yeah. I mean, and could have been could, could have been worse. Will I mean, uh, it took him what, like, almost thirty years to bring Barry Allen back. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Um, how long? How long has it been? Let's see. We got to see Kyle in the uh, what was it? The Omega Men series. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You know what? I will, when we get there, I'll have to put that on the list. I don't think I ever read those. I know Lil read that. She said she liked it. Uh, I haven't read it either, but I. Um, you know, I know we've uh, I've been talking about that Mosaic Comics podcast. Uh, yeah. He reviewed them a while back and talked about kind of the the series. And I think it's written by was it Tom King? Maybe, yeah, yeah. Because I remember at the time Lilith was saying like he, you know, Cal's not even like her, you know, favorite Lantern, but she said she enjoyed him in that uh, the Mega Men series. So. Yeah, I'll have to I'll have to pick those up too and read that because yeah, I've, but, I've heard good things about it. But yeah, been, you know, when we get to that point in time, yeah, we'll definitely have to cover those. Especially since they're Kyle Rayner. <laughs> exactly. I mean, how long has it been since we've really seen Kyle? I mean, like, we got I, to see him in Dark Crisis. For yeah, basically, basically, Hal and Joe come to pick him up. But then after that, uh-huh. he's basically just the face in the crowd. And before that, we hadn't seen him since, what, the end of Green Lanterns, uh, maybe? May, uh, you know what? I mean... <sighs> Did they mention him, or did he call in at the beginning of like Jeffrey Thorne's run? But I mean, he really wasn't there. Yeah, I don't remember. I think they were like, "Oh yeah, your cow's out there, you know, in another sector doing something." But (laughs) yeah, might have been like the the Green Lanterns or something. So wow, that's that's been several years, right? That's four years ago, five years ago. But I mean, think about it. I mean, what what significant things have we done lately with Cal or Guy? or yeah or even Hal for that matter i mean the morrison the morrison run was interesting and there were some really high points in it yeah there were some confusing things which i guess that's to be considered from morrison but you know it's i really feel like you know there's been a lot of drift away from that mythology that John's established, you know, rebirth and on, you know, yeah. with uh, the others, you know, the spectrum and, and all that. And, you know, I don't really feel like, I don't really feel like there's been much done with it, at least since, you know, 
the end of Green Lanterns or, you know, some of those, you know, like, uh, I don't even remember, uh, Venditti, I think, was doing the writing on some of those. I mean, it's been, it's been a while since we've seen non-Yellow Lanterns, right? Yeah, I mean, well, it's kind of hard to do when you go from multiple books uh, every month until, like, we haven't had a any Lantern book in a, almost a year now. Yep, absolutely. Except for that John Stewart one shot, but, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and we did, I guess, get um, Star Sapphires in Morrison's run mm-hmm. with Carol Jordan, I guess was her name, from a different oh, annuity. I see <laughs> oh, I can't wait to go over those with you. Oh. There, I've, I'm going to have to study those. It's. <laughs> I was going to say, well, it'll be a while before we get there, but yeah, yeah, I can't wait. Although there is a, 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 a one-page sequence that I, or two-page sequence that I love. I think it's from the first year, issue six, where he has to save, he has to save the universe. The Guardians are like, hey, guess what? You got to save the universe. You have three seconds. Oh, okay, great. All right, I got it. <laughs> again, <laughs> they're, they're, again, Grant Morrison ideas, you yeah. know. Well, you know, and the, the line is like, um, you know, the, the Guardians say they're going to throw the full power of the battery behind you, and then after there's a shot, you know, they don't know what happened to Hal, and uh, it's a, a lantern rings dimmed across the universe, you know, and so many bl- gigajoules of whatever of electric you know, of, of power went through there, but he's gone, you know. And it, I just it's, it's a really cool two page sequence that I just I love more than I probably should. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I do remember that now. I think I would have read that. I just see all the I could just imagine all these Green Lanterns going, oh, "How Jordan again?" Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. I mean, it's been a very long time since since we've had a regular Green Lantern book, you know, and. Again, almost a year. It was what was it? April, I think, was that when number twelve came out. Yeah, and this one won't come out till May. So the yeah, new series. It'll be over a year. That's that's crazy. I mean, we've still got other stuff. I mean, we've got lots of other Green Lantern books to talk about. I guess you know, but uh, a year. That's. I mean, that just seems like poor planning to me. Mm-hmm. I mean, it really does. I mean, I don't. Why would you not? I mean, I I don't see anything in. I don't know. After that crisis, I mean, it's just it doesn't make any sense. After the Snyderverse, where they just like trying to let stuff lay for a while because the Justice League's. I mean, the characters are back, but they're still not reforming. I, I think mm-hmm. they're pulled in that. I think that might be the end towards the end of the year. They're they're actually going to wait to give us like an actual justice league because right now they're just like oh hey titans yeah you guys again i mean they're propping up dick grace and they're just like yeah yeah you you take care of this which is cool i mean dick grayson's yeah. awesome but mm-hmm. he's not a green lantern yet so <laughs> yet <laughs> you never know um i mean you know i feel like a you know a six issue miniseries or two four issue miniseries. Yeah, so we said, yeah, anything that, that focused on Kyle or focused on Guy or Simon or Jessica. I mean, since you know, Joe, or even Joe. I mean, she was focused on in that in in the Thorn series. But you know, why why not have why not keep publishing something instead of yeah. you know, or, or how about like a seven issue miniseries and each issue focuses on a different Green Lantern to Earth. There you go. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I just don't understand why you would not continue the title in some way. And again, but, I mean, I, you could probably like uh, entice Ron Mars to come back, right? Like the Cal issue or something. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, uh, I think could, that 90s stuff is big because that's what Marvel's been doing, like a bunch of miniseries just based on 90s stuff. Yeah. Isn't there a, did I see a Warlock something? With, oh um, yeah! Oh yeah! People! Oh yeah! People were complaining because it's like, yeah, it's like I don't know if it's set in the past, and they're, I guess, uh, yeah, Ron Mars is writing, and he's like retconning in like a, uh, like a female Adam Warlock, and everyone's like, hey, isn't that her? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, who? Her? Kismet? Her? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fun with pronouns. <laughs> oh yes, I remember that. <laughs> 
See, we were talking pronouns before before everyone else was on the Quantum Zone, kids. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> and you can listen to every episode now in order on the YouTube on our YouTube channel. That's right. Because we're um, cosmic. Yeah, I'm so I'm I'm looking forward to to the new series. Oh yeah. You know, get some Hal Jordan and John Stewart superhero action, which will be great. But again, there's a lot of lanterns, and I would like to see more of those other lanterns too. Yeah, because that's why I'm like, why are they limiting themselves to one book? Because it's like, if you wanted to do backups, you could have did a second, you know, have have how hot headline a book, have John highlight headline a book, and then have backups of every, you know, Mm -hmm. everyone else in those books. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't understand, and I probably never will. So mm. I guess we get we get what we get. <laughs> I guess, but it just it just boggles my mind. We went from like what four or five uh, lantern books a month to zero. Yeah, I mean, and for the long, I mean, for four, you know, and D, uh, DC Rebirth, yeah, there were two titles. You know, there was Hal and the Green Lantern Corps and Green Lanterns. So, and then we went down to one. Yeah, and that, one they, and they, then yeah. zero. <laughs> I just saw people. Oh my god! Uh, I know you, you'll you'll never admit this, but I saw people online. They're saying, "Oh yeah, is, uh, did that last series get canceled because the uh, writer doesn't like Hal Jordan and input Hal Jordan in the book?" And stuff. <laughs> you know, of of so I, I like a lot of things about that series. Yeah, right. There, there's a lot of things to like. There's also a lot of things to not like. And as far as things to not like, not having Hal in it is pretty low on the list. You well, know, like, I'm, like <laughs> you said, there was good writing, but it's like I come to Green Lantern for rings and stuff. And like ha- half that series, it was like, yeah, everyone's ring was depowered, basically, except for like Joe. Yeah. And it's just like. Yeah, I mean, Ron, I think Ron Mars said it best. It's a special effects book, right? And. You you took out all the special effects, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. And, and I know the Green Lanterns are like a peacekeeping force, but it's like at least the Earth Lanterns. I mean, again, it's like the Flash family, the Batman family. It's like they're better when they're together. You know, if you're gonna yeah. have all these characters in the story, they're better when they're together. Mm-hmm. And then you know the, uh, the oh, murder he... of a lot of Green Lanterns. <laughs> you know, the outright kill. I mean. There's a pretty high body count for that book, which I felt was perhaps a little overboard, you know? Do you think writers feel safe killing off lanterns because there's like, you know, well, first there was 3,600, then there was 7,200. It's like, oh, there's thousands of them. You know, people don't know. Yeah, I and I've... A sector and, you know, an unknown sector. Just kill off a bunch of lanterns. And that That's always bothered me because, you know, a sector of space... Mm-hmm. You know, if you have 3,600 yeah. sectors, a sector of space is still infinite because it's a pie shape that goes out forever. Well, a pie shape, three-dimensional pie shape that goes out forever, right? Yeah. And one lantern is picked to protect that entire 1,3600th of infinity. Yeah. And pretty much does it, right? So the fact that they can do that, they're not cannon fodder. And I think, yeah, I feel like you're right. There's a lot of writers that just treat him as cannon fodder. Like, oh, we're going to take this Green Lantern here and, yeah, we're going to kill him to show just how powerful our new villain is or something like that. Oh, yeah. that Again, yeah, mo- I think modern take on Green Lantern, that's the whole problem. It's just like, oh, yeah, we got a new, the new big bad this week or this month. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, he already killed a bunch of lanterns. Well, and and I like, I mean, this was apparently something I think Thorne said that I kind of agree with, you know, lanterns should only get together when there's a really, really big threat, because again, one of them can handle about anything. Yeah. Now, granted, I do like seeing Guy and Hal and John and Kyle and them and Simon and Jessica all together, you know, so maybe, you know, maybe we can figure out a way for that to happen, but you know, a lot of things that happen in, you know, in near Oa or around, you know, Earth or things like that, you know, the rest of the Lanterns just don't care about because they're out doing their thing. Exactly. And they're, they're not, 
Please stop destroying the the power battery. Exactly. <laughs> Killing the rings. It just it's it's, uh, it's so tired. <laughs> I, I mean, it would be completely ridiculous, but it's like if you if we did quarantine all the Earth Green Lanterns to Sector Two Eight One Four, what if we had like remember when we covered the first appearance of Kilowog that Green Lantern Core series? Oh, yeah. If we did that, <laughs> but with all the uh, all the human Green Lanterns. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I was. Because, you know, we read that issue, which yeah. is really interesting because it's a completely different, I mean, it's Steve Englehart. Yes. And it's late 80s, right? It's like 88, 89. Yeah. 87, somewhere oh, wait, in there. Maybe, maybe, oh, yeah. Maybe, oh, uh, no, probably like 86, 87. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think 88 was the Action Comics Weekly. Oh, yeah. That's right. So, so the 50th anniversary. Yeah. Yeah. So, um It's, you know, Englehart was a great writer for his time, but a lot of what I think, you know, worked for a book of that time wouldn't necessarily work today. And yeah. it's, it's very, it was, it was just an interesting kind of time capsule read. I mean, it's like, it's like reading a Silver Age book or like reading, you know, uh, Hard Traveling Heroes, you know, yeah. it's, you know, the art's beautiful and the writing's good, but the writing is very much of its time. I, I mean, again, there were the interesting themes like, you know, the whole Kilwag and Russia thing and stuff, but it's like, it basically came down to, you know, it was a superhero book. It, you know, it was just, yeah. like, uh, Oh, here, here's, here's an earth super villain. Let's punch him in the face. Yeah. And you know, that's, that's something that John's, I think really veered, you know, green lantern is not a superhero. No. Now I don't like him being a cop for a no. lot of reasons. But, and especially, it seemed to get very militarized around this time as well, which, you know, I'm not a huge fan of either. Well, a lot of comics did that. I think, well, again, yeah. Green Lantern, it's easy because of the organization, but it's like yeah. Batman, even like Captain America. I'm like, I like when yeah. they, you know, we play him like, again, Grunewald, you know, play him as a straight up superhero, not as like yeah. a soldier or an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's where a lot of, you know, the... um the Bucky run, uh, the writer, why can I not remember his name? Brubaker. Brubaker. Yeah. Ed Brubaker. You know, and those, those are good stories, but you know, he was, and then we got a lot of those stories for a long time because we yeah. had a lot of superhero. I mean, cause that's kind of the, yeah. the yin and the yang, you know, you come back and forth between the two yeah. extremes, I feel like. And with Green Lantern, you know, I feel like we've, we've gone the milit militarized police route, you know, and, I would much rather see them more as, you know, and we've talked about this as like, you know, hey, we're first responders and we're here to, you know, yeah, we're not here to arrest somebody. We're here to keep people safe and keep them alive. And if something needs beat down, we'll beat it down, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I know you don't. I don't think you like the Earth stuff as much, but I kind of like a mix of, you know, space yeah. and Earth. But, Mm -hmm. Okay, the next writer who ever picks up the Justice League later in the year, here's my thought. Around that meeting table, you have a Green Lantern chair, but it could be any of the Green Lanterns at any point. You know, one yeah. story, it's Hal. The next story, maybe it's Cat. But yeah, you, you know, you're always rotate Whoever the Green Lantern is near or on Earth at the moment, yeah, they're... That's sleeping. the chair, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could... I mean, you want to keep it fresh. You could rotate Green Lanterns out of there every arc. Yeah. Well, you know, and I'm... I have to say, I really like the development of Jessica as a Yellow Lantern. You know, mm -hmm. I think that that's something that, and I don't, who, do you remember who wrote that annual? No, 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 no. I don't oh. remember who wrote that annual either, but I really like that development for her. Um, because, you know, fear is something that she has a familiarity with that's greater than any of the other lanterns right oh yeah oh yeah yeah and then you know simon joe john and kyle and guy you know they they're all very different lanterns and then of course you know there's hal who's you know uh, oh, okay <laughs> uh, yes 
That Green Lantern 2021 <laughs> annual was written by Ryan Caddy, C A D Y. Ah, huh. hmm. I'm not familiar with. Yeah, I mean, neither am I. So I wonder if he's a newer guy, but. Uh... Hmm. But uh, yeah, I thought it was a really well done. A really well done story. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, there's. I'm, I'm looking forward to reading it because I've heard great things about it. But during the New 52, uh, Guy becomes a Red Lantern and leads the Red Lanterns, mm -hmm. right, for a mm -hmm. while. And, and I've heard that that's a really, really good arc. I think it involves Supergirl, too. Yeah, I, I did read some recently. I haven't read the whole series, but I did pick some up and back issues. Yeah, like I said, I enjoyed it. And like later on, like uh, he kind of like teams up with Simon. I mean, that's mm -hmm. that's good. So, yeah. I mean, there's there's so much stuff that can be done with all of the lanterns, you okay. know. I mean, <sighs> I want a lantern book, man. I want to read he, new lantern he, stories. <laughs> there's so much you could do with Green Lantern. I mean, just the human Green Lanterns. I mean, look at the mix you have. I mean, you have men, women, different ethnic mm -hmm. backgrounds. It's like, and then you branch out to all the alien Green Lanterns. It's like, yeah. I mean, it's, it really is. And again, it's like, there's how there's, you know, 7,200 green lanterns, maybe at the moment, it's like, if you have enough, a good enough story idea, they'll let you create your own green lantern. Yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> you know, and that's, and you can tell so many different types of stories, yeah. you know, I mean, so much of, you know, John's run comes out of you know groundwork that was laid in backup stories you know <laughs> by by alan moore and and dave gibbons and uh what john toddlebean maybe and mm -hmm. i'm trying to remember some of the artists on those books but yeah i mean there's there's so much that can be done because you know there's such a vast canvas with all of these green lanterns oh yeah and granted, I mean, I, I still want to see Hal Jordan stories, but I also want to see Joe stories, Simon stories, Jessica stories. Guy, yeah, I, I, Rebirth made me a Guy Gardner fan. You know how you know how hard that was to do, Phil. Oh, I know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> because we read Guy Gardner, we read I, all I, of them. <laughs> I, I, I think that was a hard sell for a lot of people. Yes, <laughs> but it worked, you know. And then John, you know, John's always been a good. I feel like John got a little bit of short shrift because he was made kind of the fall guy in Cosmic Odyssey, which we're going to get to eventually. Yes, in a few weeks here. Yeah, not too long from now. Yeah. And and then all the weird crap with Katma from Action Comics Weekly. I mean, if, if, if you're going to make one thing stick from Action Comics Weekly, why did it have to be that? You know? And, and again, <laughs> if you want one example of any of them about the militarization it's john because remember he used to be the architect you know yep. he used to be the brain and then the now, know, he's, a, it, now he's a marine yeah yeah i don't know if it's because the justice league animated series did that but yeah no they just made him a, a marine and it's just like mm -hmm. yeah i mean you have a ring you have a power ring you don't have to you know it's all it's not like you're a you're batman you don't have to have like a a background like that yeah i mean you don't kyle hmm. kyle doesn't Simon, Jessica, Joe was a cop. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At all those Earth Green Lanterns, I like to, you know, I like John being the architect. You know, he could be like the strategist. He can be the brain, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Because Hal, I mean, Hal's going to dive thing. straight. Hal's just going to dive in. <laughs> I saw a, uh, they posted, maybe this is on Reddit. I can't remember where they, they posted a, an excerpt from a, a page where Hal's riding in the Batmobile. And Batman says, so we're going to go over the plan of what we're going to do when we get there. He goes, yeah, I'm going to hit him with a, you know, giant boxing glove really hard. <laughs> and he's joking, of course, but that's what he does, right? <laughs> I think that's like, uh, uh, what is that, like issue eight or nine, you know, right after Rebirth, you, you know. You know uh -huh. I, I, so were they going after the tattooed man or something? Maybe. Or, that or, may have been it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hit him really hard with a giant boxing glove. <laughs> I mean, and that's so he's not the strategist, you know. And no, that's what, what I'm saying. I, 
I was, I was actually, uh, as I was running the other day, and I, and I use running with air quotes because I'm not really running yet. I'm still only five weeks into the couch to 5K. So he anyway. Was, he was running to the bathroom, kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you know, I thought it would, I think it would be fun to have Hal kind of go, you know, maybe I need to be more of a thinker, you know, and, and have, you know, get trained by John and Batman and every time he thinks, he gets his butt handed to him. You know, he just gets crap kicked out of him. And finally, you know, after a while, he realizes that, you know, I do better when I don't think. Oh, when that, I just charge in, right? <laughs> that's the scene, man. He, yeah, he tries to be a deep thinker, and he's getting his butt handed to him. And then he goes, ah, screw it, and just, like, blast just, him. Yeah. <laughs> just, you know, doesn't think, just reacts. And because, you know, I think that's, you know, really one of the core differences between him and John is that his instincts, you know, yes. and that's and what I was granted, going to say instinct. He runs on instinct. Yes. He runs on instinct. Whereas John is very much a thinker and a planner. And, you know, when you think about it, fighter pilots have to have, you know, almost, you know, inhuman reflexes and be able to think absolutely on their feet, mm -hmm. which, you know, makes perfect sense for that type of behavior there. And, you know, and, you look at pilots too. Pilots are are educated, and usually, a, you know, above average intelligence too. Or you take it the other direction, and you know, mm -hmm. you have how you know a monologue and just how thinking to himself. Yeah, people think I'm impulsive, but I'm not. He's like, I just think really quick because you know I'm used yeah. to problems coming at me at Mach two, Mach three. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just think really fast. Yeah, <laughs> like the Flash and giant boxing gloves. <laughs> Uh, oh, I think we've talked this one about to death, haven't we? <laughs> oh, yeah. You got his weekly How Jordan Thoughts out. So. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh, man. Um, Stay tuned for Rebirth, our six hour special coming in a few weeks. Here. <laughs> Just six hours? You're cutting me down from 12? Dang. <laughs> what, an hour for each issue is not enough? <laughs> exactly. We need two. We need two. <laughs> you see this panel on page five here? Yes. <laughs> All right. You know, hmm. Yep. It's, you know, Green Lantern, maybe not from a publishing standpoint right now, but from a, you know, just the vastness of the mythology and the characters that we have is in a really good position, I think. You know, it's. Oh, yeah. It, everything's there that we need, you know, if they'll just start, you know, giving us that monthly book again or two books. Exactly. All right. So yes, yeah, so next week we're going to do the next three issues of the Judd Winnick one green lantern, 153 through 155. And I think 153 may be uh cow going to his high school reunion, uh, which has, oh. <laughs> has a humorous cover. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I remember that cover. Yeah, <laughs> And then in two weeks, we'll, oh, wait, uh, yes, in two weeks, yeah, we're going to do uh, the last uh, couple issues of the Spectre, Spectre 24 through 27, and then follow that up the week after by JLA Spectre Soul War 1 and 2. Nice. And then, the, yes, oh, good. The pieces the pieces are, are being put into place for a certain uh, series coming up. Yes, we're inching towards <laughs> rebirth here, yes. Uh, and then, yes, in one month, we're going to do Green Lantern 156 and 157 and Cosmic Odyssey. Ah, yes. Because it'll fit the theme of that ep episode, kids. <laughs> uh, yes. I certain someone. I wonder who that's about. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So, so, yes, this is episode 105. What did I say? I, re I just closed the thing, but I think uh, Rebirth is 118. So we're getting close, world. 13 episodes. That's gonna be a that's gonna be fun. I'm because I get to reread it again. I just read it at the end of last year, and three now months. I get to reread it again three in three months. months. <laughs> Are you sure you'll be in the mood to read it again? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you didn't have the time, would you need to read it, or would you could you do it by memory? I could probably read do it, it so memory. many times. I have read it so many times, <laughs> <laughs> but it's always good to reread. I mean, there's. There's some moments, oh, yeah, yeah. Even, even though I've read it that many times, like, you know, that still just 
hit exactly like they're supposed to. Oh yeah, no, I prefer you read it, but I, I'm just saying, <laughs> if, you, if you had to, you could do probably do it by memory. Oh yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, kids. So yes, so send us your thoughts on all that, uh, all the upcoming stuff for health. Send us your thoughts on this. We'll read it next time. Uh, email us capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's six one four thirty eight capes. And remember, you can find uh, Sector 2814 on Facebook, on Twitter. Find Capes Lunatic Sidekicks on Instagram, Capes Lunatics Podcast Network on Hive. The YouTube channel, like I said, everything gets a video, including everything's in handy uh, playlist. So if you just want to listen to every episode of this show or every episode of the Quantum Zone, yes, you can just go on youtube completely free all we ask is that you hit this subscribe you smash that subscribe button (laughs) as we are climbing so yes we did we did hit and surpass 269 so the next target is now 369 Lilith is counting on you (laughs) little hellfire agent of smash smash it all right and again the patreon because once again this is our passion project we're paying for this out of our own pockets Every little bit helps for three to five dollars gets you early access to creator interviews, uh, including the monthly Chichester chats. Always a great time. I got the good mic out for you guys. All the old content is up there, like those damn superhero movie brackets. Uh, oh my god, that's... Which, which Will was even on an episode of the that. So uh, much, so much pain, man. So much pain. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, we're doing a bunch of one one and dones this year. Uh, the one that Lilith and I just did for January when we want to try to rope everyone else into some time you know, through the year. This, that, or the third where we ask each other questions and it's like, you know, do you prefer Coke, Pepsi, or do you do the third? You know, just goofy stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, I already talked to Kristen, Justin. Will, we want to get you on there at some point. Uh, you bet. <laughs> and then I, I want to do at least one Quantum Zone sometime this year, so. Yeah, that would be cool. I wish we had some Quasar news. I know. Oh, did you see that? Uh, supposedly there was a rumor. I don't know how true it is. They're like, oh, there's a character named Quas in Quantum Mania. So maybe that's yes. it. Oh, how great would that be? That would be so awesome. Oh, yeah. You sent that to me, didn't you? <laughs> I think I did. Yeah. Yes. yes. Was... <laughs> Cause it, oh, yeah. It was like, uh, hey, Quasar could be in there. Go buy his first issue because it's going to go up in value. I'm like, I don't care about that. What? Tell me about this movie thing. What? Exactly. <laughs> And don't tell me it's out of the realm of possibility, Little Hellfire. We're getting damn Adam Warlock. Come on. Uh, yes, Warlock. Mm, Warlock. <laughs> Warlock. Why Adam Warlock? All right. So, yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> subscribe to the Patreon and pick yourself up some Capes and Lunatics and Capes and Lunatic Sidekicks merch. Find it all at Linktree, L I N K T R dot E E slash Capes and Lunatics. All right, Mr. Will Allred, Master of the Core, Master of the Quantum Zone, Master of Podcasting and Kickstarter. <laughs> Where can people uh, find everything you do? Uh, you can find me at Walred. That's at W-A-L-L-R-E-D. Uh, Gmail, Twitter, Facebook. Pick your social media. I'm probably on there, even if I don't remember setting it up or not. Uh, if you want to check out my uh, self-published comics, uh that are done via Kickstarter, you can check out Crossover Division at crossoverdivision.com. Uh, number four should be getting here from the printer, hopefully within the next week or two. I'm excited about that. You can also check out Diary of Night at diaryofnight.com. And uh, like Phil said, I don't just annoy him. Uh, I don't just annoy him every week. I also annoy uh, another person on a podcast, uh, Kevin jo- writer Kevin Joseph uh, of Tart. He and I hang out every f- late Friday night, and we talk uh, Kickstarter comics projects with their creators, uh, and uh, you know let them promote their work. So it's a good place to see what you know kind of new comics are on Kickstarter. Lots of fun. And then finally, you're here, so you obviously have great taste. That means you probably love Quasar as well. So uh, check out the Quantum Zone at quantumzone.org for all your Quasar information. I'll put it in my navel. <laughs> hey, boys, you look at the party. I love the party. Oh, my God. I swear we have a drop for everything because uh, Lilith and I have been talking some like Ant Man and Wasp stuff over on Spider Cast. And then Justin and I did the first appearance of Hank Pym and Janet Van Dyne already. So I was like, anytime we even come close to Pym Particles, I'm just like, I, I know which one you're talking about. Pym Particles on it to make it bigger. Yep. <laughs> 
Yep. I knew where exactly where you were going with that. <laughs> I was like, yes, we have drops. Kids, we literally have a drop for everything. The yin to Darkhawk's yang. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, Darkhawk. Yeah, we need to get Maddie in here for a quantum zone this year. All right. Yep, absolutely. All right. Thank you for joining us again in one week. Green Lantern 153 through 155. And then we wrap up that Spectre series. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I'm hoping that uh, we get kind of a true wrap up. Um, yeah. I mean, it's because I was actually I was thinking about redemption the other day, and I was like, how does that fit? You know, how would how would you know JMD Mateus say that that works kind of in that framework of the Spectre series because it's it's really interesting, you know. Well, all right. Well, we will answer that question <laughs> in two weeks. <laughs> Come back next time. And remember, watch those mental ex ex boyfriends. Good night. That's right. <laughs>